Exactly, yeah, exactly. So let's let's roll. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have a major update from Tim Alexander. A lot of stories, some of them are ones that I think are refurbished stories, like the uh, one you're going to mention about Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. Uh, Tim, let's uh, hop into it and, and uh, figure out what's being recycled and why and what's going on. Well, there's a, a story out uh, from London that uh, suggests that Pakistan may give these uh, Saudis nuclear weapons uh, to handle uh, to counter any threat from Iran. Uh, first off, uh, that the reality is the Saudis paid for most of the Pakistani nuclear program, they and the Chinese, uh, for quite some time. Uh, it's been believed by insiders that uh, Saudi Arabia was in possession of several nukes uh, manufactured in Pakistan. Uh, quite some a number of years ago, Saudi Arabia uh, acquired from uh, the People's Republic of China uh, a force of IRBMs, intermediate range ballistic nuclear missiles, that could hit anywhere in the Middle East and parts of Europe. Uh, these IRBMs are really designed for, for one thing only, and that's for nuclear warheads. Uh, and then a few years later, the Chinese updated them from liquid fuel to, to uh, solid fuel. Uh, the, I believe the reason for the story is uh, to try to derail the deal that uh, may come as early as tomorrow uh, between Iran, the United States, and the West um, over the Iranian nuclear program. And that could uh, definitely take a lot of wind out of Netanyahu's sails. Netanyahu is determined that there be a war between uh, Iran and uh, the Western powers. And, uh, you know, that the... Uh, <laughs> Netanyahu is just, he's nuts, and uh, he's, he's evil to the max, and he wants a general Middle Eastern war, which will almost certainly be the Third World War. So far, uh, people in the West have finally woken up and said, you know, we think we'll die another day. We don't really, you know, we don't really think we're going to let well, you uh, talk us I into don't, our own well, death. Obviously, he is actually crazy, because it'll be the death of anybody in Israel that's not in a nuclear bunker. Well, that's what many of the top... Uh, intelligence people in Israel have been saying that uh, people like Meyer Dragan, who's who's as tough as they come, tough as nails, uh, and as pro-Israeli as anybody other was, uh, he is vehemently opposed to the Netanyahu government, uh, basically because he, I think he sees it as as a grave danger to the state of Israel. And uh, and now Lieberman has uh, won his uh, criminal case, and he's going back into the cabinet and wants to be the prime minister to succeed Netanyahu. And I have to tell you, uh, Lieberman is the only major politician in Israel that makes Netanyahu look like a, uh, a pacifist. So... <laughs> Anyway, so that's that's that story. Um, uh, a little bit further down the road, Israel vehemently uh, is denying poisoning Arafat with uh, uh, plutonium. Uh, it, uh, it was not polonium, yeah. They, yeah, they actually plutonium. have isolated that. I think they isolated it now from his body. So it's not yeah, a question I, whether he know, was poisoned it, by it. It's, it's it's already proven. So please continue on the story. Well, it, it, it was obvious uh, to me, and I said so at the time, and I think to, to any independent observer, that Arafat was uh, whacked. Uh, and that uh, the, the number one uh, suspect has to be the Mossad. And while they're vehemently denying it, you know, uh, who benefited? Uh, and, and it was clearly Israel. Arafat was the leader of the Palestinian people, and um, they took him down. And it's not the first time they've done anything like that. Uh, the, 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 here's the thing about Israel. There are people in Israel that profit uh, both personally and uh, economically, politically, from a continuing near-war state. But Israel as a whole uh, 
uh, is a small target. It's a very small state, as you said the other day. It's it's what about a third the size of Nova Scotia, and quite frankly, it is in Israel's benefit and the benefit of the people in Israel to reach uh, agreements and and uh, with their neighbors and to move away from this constant near war state with with many of its neighbors and. Uh, the Netanyahu government and many in, in, in the government of Israel are going in the exact opposite direction of what's good for the pe- long-term survival of the people in Israel. That's and that's crazy. It's evil. It's it's called whatever you want, but it, it makes no sense. I think Lieberman and, uh, and Netanyahu's attitude is this greater Israel a fallacy that they're going to win their way into creating greater Israel from the Euphrates River to the Nile. And that's yeah, me. well, you know, I had I had lunch one time with one of Israel's top generals. So there were only three of us. So the other guy was a friend of mine who headed up a design bureau, aerospace design bureau. And you know, the general said when he was younger, he he had a, a armored column that was uh, could have made it all the way to Cairo, uh, Cairo in Egypt, and a buddy of his uh, could have made it into Damascus. And he said, well, "What would we have done with them had we taken them?" And uh, uh, I think, you know, this idea of greater Israel is is strategic overreach to say nothing of gross immorality and strategic insanity, because you now have uh, weapons of mass destruction that uh, aren't limited to, to nuclear. You have advanced biologicals, you have chemicals, you have scalar, and it, it, it doesn't make sense to want to play Napoleon or Hitler uh, in the 21st century. It's just not strategically viable. Uh, but some people haven't got that message, and that's, um, that's you know, uh, unfortunate. Um, another uh, very interesting. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really that's really bizarre uh, that that even would be brought into the question. I think what we need to do is America needs to take over the state of Israel, turf the government, set it up like a state, have the Joint Chiefs of Staff be in total control of the defensive and offensive weapons of Israel. Israel can sh- should not and cannot be an independent state from America if we're going to take on all the brunt of defending them and being the target of a third world war by Russia and China if they start a war. Well, yes, but uh, good luck with that. I mean, they're they're not going to, uh, uh, they have we, a in-your-face attitude, you know. <clears throat> How about if we just annex them? We just have uh, Congress <laughs> annex them. We have annexed your country. If you want to be brought any protection, we're taking you over, just like the mob. We're going to take you over. We're going to protect the citizenry from your craziness. And if anybody attacks you, they're attacking America, and then God help them. Well, uh, I think their attitude is we're annexing you, America, and we uh, call the shots because we bribe the politicians. And the ones we haven't bribed, we blackmail. We know where all the bodies are buried. So, uh, Well, that's why they have all the security systems there for all those different uh, agencies are Israeli. Yeah, yeah, and that's why the Israelis uh, can handle uh, uh, phone billing for almost everybody's telephone in the United States, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, France, uh, you know, NSA was originally accused of doing a, a spying on everybody's telephone calls, but it's, it's later come out it really wasn't NSA, it was Israeli Mossad. So this right. little country, a third the size of Nova Scotia, is uh, tapping the phones of uh, millions per day in, in France, and that's uh, totally bizarre, uh, and that is tolerated uh, by the French is reflective of the fact that the current president, the former president, were both uh, Zionist and uh, uh, Rothschild frontmen. And, uh, you know, that's that's the problem is uh, you have these globalists and Zionists pulling the, the strings behind the, the uh, uh you know, behind the uh, uh, curtain, and it's not good for the people of France. It's like it's not good for the people of the United States here. And I would say, I would say, and this is a point I've tried to make for years, it's not even good for Israel because uh, nobody can uh, stand up to them and say, you know, you guys are really messing up. You're, you're going you're gonna to get yourself killed. So, and yeah. more when we come back. Absolutely amazing. Uh you know, and I thank God that the agreement is coming forward to put a stop again to a nuclear attack on Iran by the crazy nation of Israel.
welcome back. And uh, Tim, let's continue with these stories. Um, lots of things are going on in our, our society. I see a converging storm of a lot of things. What are, as a military analyst, as a historian, as a professor, where do you see this going in the next few months? Because we now have this case you just announced on the break of uh, the MERS Corona 2 virus, now beta coronavirus, showing up in Spain. It's only a matter of time before we have an airborne plague, before we have a major burp of radiation. And by the way, we found out that next Friday, not to tomorrow, but next Friday, they're going to pull these fuel rod assembly bundles. We talked about that in the first hour with Dr. John Apsley. That means that the maniacs are going to possibly cause a fire fork fire. We have uh, Obamacare. They claim that's not like, going to happen, but but quite frankly, I didn't claim uh, all they want. Uh, the chances are, if, if you play with matches on a gasoline uh, above a gasoline can, you're going to have a fire. So they're going to have a fire if they do pull these fuel rod assembly bundles. Then we have Obamacare that's literally killing the economy and destroying jobs. And we we know well, that hey, Obamacare. Let me, let me give you a little statistic that's just out. Uh, last year in the United States, student and car loans represented 99% of all consumer credit loans taken out. Now, uh, car loans, well, you have to have a car in America to get around unless you're in one of, uh, one of uh, a few big cities that have really good, uh, effective public transportation. Yeah, like, uh, you know, like A lot Portland. of people don't want a car Portland, in New York, York City. It's, it's too much of a hassle. But yeah. those, are, those are exception areas. Yeah, Basically, like uh, New York City United and Portland. States, you have to have a car. Yeah. So, okay, then you have student loans, and these are, you know, the young people trying to get an education in the hopes that the, the economy will turn around and there'll be a job for them down the road. So those are 99% of all loans. That's an indication that uh, the economy is in a deep, not recession, and certainly not recovery from a recession, but is in a deep economic depression, that's the D word, uh, and that things are bad and apt to get very much worse. And I think there's uh, a couple the of fulcrum are issues. Are there. All the fundamentals uh, indicate that we're going to have an airborne plague, a radiation surge over our country, a major radiation cloud, an economic chaos, because Obamacare will start to cause major destruction of the health care system. And then we have this the continued push by Israel to try to start a Mideast war. And uh, we have five nations also teetering on, teetering on bankruptcy. Uh, that includes India, uh, Brazil and, the, and and several other very large nations, all they have to do is start a bond market run. And uh, they've announced last week, we talked about this with Harley Schlanger on Wednesdays, they announced last week they're going to bail in 17% of everybody's assets, including your equity in your home in Europe, and give it to the banks. They're going to have a, a basically a one-time shot where they're going to tax everybody on all their assets, including your money in your bank account, your gold and silver coins, your IRA, even the value in your home. That's well, crazy. That's, that's, that's stealing from everybody for the, the, the uh, global banksters. And uh, that will get worse. That's the camel's toe under the tent, even though it's where their enormous toe. Uh, and they, they'll take all they can take as long as the public uh, tolerates it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just that simple. Uh, the, the, the concept of democracy, of private property, uh, of a good quality economic future and political freedom is being destroyed uh, across the world. By And the suspects are always the same people. Uh, former American President Jimmy Carter and various other uh, senior U.S. officials are coming out uh, today and saying, NSA spying is destroying the Constitution. And, of course, in Great Britain, uh, the government's trying to counter that, and they're saying, well, they're protecting uh, the freedom of the British people. And the NSA and, uh, uh, let's see, what's it called, G... QH, I forget, the British uh, equivalent. Uh, they've been spying on everybody for years through Echelon, and uh, now uh, Snowden has, has 
you know, he's woken people up. Most of us that were following it, uh, we weren't surprised at anything that was said because we already knew it. But uh, it, you don't uh, look. Uh, if if they're doing this to stop terrorism, uh, how come they didn't stop the Boston bombing? How come they didn't stop this, 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 this? And the reality is, it's not about terrorism, and it it's long since moved from uh, from uh, watching the Soviet Union, which doesn't exist, or, or potential enemies. It's about watching and treating the American public and the British public and the French public, et cetera, et cetera, as the enemy. And that is part and parcel of the implementation of a high-tech police state, or, or more probably a slave state, uh, one that would make uh, uh, Stalin and Hitler uh, spin in their grave with envy, because remember, they didn't have the technology. And we, as human beings, have to uh, put our feet down and say, look, uh, we're not the slaves of some crooks that are, are behind the scenes running the government. We will not be your slaves. You will not take our guns away. Uh, we will not tolerate you spying on every phone call, on every email, on everything we do. Now they're going to uh, spy on our cars and taxes based on how much we drive, et cetera, et cetera. That's not right. We're not your damn slave. Uh, you're supposed to be working for us. You don't own us. And the public is going to have to put its feet down, and it's going to have to seize control. Well, I, I think you're going to see that happen in 2014. I think you're going to see a pushback. Uh, they were try, trying to push the uh, National ID March of this year. Uh, no, sorry, May of this year, this year, 2013. It was actually supposed to be, they pushed it back to next year. Uh, they want to start really pushing on this immigration bill. What do you think of that? Because I want a streamlined immigration system that's reasonable cost and, and makes people that are want to learn to become Americans, learn the language, learn the culture, learn the Constitution. But I don't want a system that jumps the uh, the... the system and gives people rights to vote, etc., without becoming fully integrated as an American. I think it's very dangerous. Well, they may be solving our immigration problem. When the economy is going to hell so bad, uh, many of the Mexicans have left. Well, that's true to some extent, but it's still so much relatively better. If you actually look at the total number, though, the numbers are between 25 and 35 million. That doesn't include all the relatives. So the problem is I'm not afraid of them being here as long as they go through the process of immigration uh, that's proper, and well, then people who I, I, are criminals don't. I, I disagree with you. I am afraid of uh, allowing large numbers of uh, well, uh, quasi-educated well, poor people into the country who can't really contribute to the country. I didn't say you leave it wide, the door wide open. I say you have you have to have a system where you have a proper immigration system. Say we need more computer programmers, more with different skill sets from different countries. We can't have a wide open door and then they just arrive and then they're now in the queue to actually be processed through this fa now faster queue. So you and, can and, get you know, flooded with. Like uh, that contribute. I mean, I, I know uh, a uh, uh, a programmer from Eastern Europe who uh, is brilliant, and now he's very much American. His wife has a Ph.D. He has a master's, uh, and uh, it's great. They're a great family, and uh, they're contributing. But uh, what if he was a Mexican gang member? Well, I think that it, I'm not so much against the people even of, quote, lower skill sets coming here. I think the key issue is we've got to make sure we don't have criminals uh, arriving at the country. We don't have people that want to have family values. Welcome back, and uh, we're going with Chris Harris, <clears throat> Chris, our nuclear expert, that's his radio name. Uh, there's a, two major issues going on. We've got the NERC trial that's going to be coming on on the 13th, which is real soon. That's literally within days. Uh, you remember, the, Monday's the 11th, so we're talking about Wednesday, next Wednesday, 13th and 14th. We also have, by the way, November 13th, 14th is when the alignment with uh, Mercury increases the chance of ice on comet causing major CMEs. There were 28 X and M class CMEs last month, the month of October. Uh, we have some, uh, you mentioned something going up in Montreal. I want you to kind of expand on that and what's happening with the NERC trial and how dangerous that is to what's called SCADA and all the other issues dealing with nuclear plants, testing infrastructure and how it actually may destroy equipment. Um, it's part of an executive order that Obama signed by himself, without Congress, of course, executive orders, in February of this year. So let's get the details and then we want to 
continue that major update we did with John Apsley today on the first hour on what's going on with Fukushima because they delayed a week just to next Friday pulling these fuel rod assemblies from the 200 plus bundles that they think they can get that are not bent. I'm certain that if they pull these they're going to start a fire. And if you have a fire we're going to have a major radiation release and we're going to start seeing acute on chronic radiation sickness not only in Japan where they should be evacuating right now but here in North America. So let's look at the NERC trial first and how crazy this is. Again, another executive order by your president and idiot in chief, Executive Order 13636, Cybersecurity Practices Concerning the Nation's Critical Infrastructure and Key Resources, signed by the Abominator. Okay, Dr. Bill, yes, this is a trade, uh, an article from a trade uh, magazine, and it's uh, a good publication, it's, uh, a good, ma good mainstream publication for the electrical grid. And it ties in the uh, coming up uh, NERC uh, uh, exercise with an executive order 13636. That was the cybersecurity practices concerning the nation's critical infrastructure and key resources. And in this case, uh, NIST has been charged with uh, coming up with certain, finding out what vulnerabilities there are on, on the grid and other, other critical infrastructure. But we're talking mainly about the grid. Let me just read you a little bit from this. To have a complete understanding of the system's current state and condition is important not only to understand the protocols of power flow and transfer among interconnections, but have the ability to retrieve the information from the grid and identify areas of weaknesses in the, in the operation of the grid. Now, this is from a trade magazine, so this is um, uh, real good, good information. Based on facilities, ratings, weaknesses in the systems can be extracted from data, and uh, they, they can use uh, the SCADA system, relays, power devices, and uh, other other equipment, too. Now, utilities that understand the application and operation of the, of the uh, weaknesses in the grid, in the system grid, uh, they'll be able to extract information and find the weak points. And, and here, here's the key. They'll be able to develop metrics so that they know when signals are being injected into the system from uh, other sources or to say places that they don't want it to come from. That's really what I believe they're going to be testing. Okay, so about now, let's, let's summarize that. What that basically means is they're not just going to do a computer simulation. They're going to insert live false signals to a system and see how people respond to these live signals to the live power grid network and the backup power for nuclear reactors. Well, I can't say that. What I'm saying is even if they have a section of the system that's not in service and they and they put signals into it, inject signals into that portion of the system, that that in itself would be useful information to find out what happens. But what happens what I don't uh, I, I don't see any uh, indication that they will be able to contain a signal. What if they do uh, inject a signal and it cross contaminates a relay and it hits well, this is what this, by the way, is what they did in 9/11. Most people don't realize 9/11 was a, dr a drill. Then they try to blame it on the uh, Saudis or or these other terrorists. The fact is, it was a U.S. sponsored drill. This is a drill that very probably, not possibly, very probably will destroy equipment and could cause a station blackout and a loss of containment of nuclear reactors. That's what happened at Chernobyl. And what I'm trying to say is, from this trade article and what you're saying. They're not just going to do a cybernetic kind of computer modeling of the power grid system between Canada and Mexico and the United States. They're going to insert data and send it to the power controllers of the various parts of the grid and the backup power to nuclear reactors to see how the people and the systems respond. So this is going to be a live test of a system that could blow equipment and cause a nuclear meltdown in reactors. As we, we said before, hope and luck is not a robust barrier. Exactly. No, this is, this, is a, this is what's called stupid and stupider. This is taking a system that doesn't work and it shouldn't be tested in this manner, not improving the, the, the hardening of the power grid against coronal mass ejections or cyber terrorism. In fact, setting up the power grid to actually be more what's called compliant with the uh, smart grid system, which they want to have with these smart meters, etc., increases the chance of cyber terrorism, whether it's a Stuxnet type USB virus or it's hacking into the internet. So they're increasing the likelihood of cyber terrorism and they haven't ha hardened the power grid like the Canadians did after James Bay 1989 hardened. The Canadian power grid was hardened by the Parliament of Canada back in the, in the early 90s, but America didn't. So why would you test a system you haven't hardened and you don't have it fixed 
and you don't know what the consequences will be if you're going to lose equipment or lose control of nuclear reactors. This is very stupid, and it's going to destroy equipment and cause major problems for our population. Well, there's, hope. I mean, there's that hope word again that they, that they can keep mm-hmm. the contained. Now, here's the other problem, though. Remember, uh, during, uh, during Fukushima and all the collective experts that were supposed to know everything about what was going on and how to fix it, they really didn't. So it's the same people that would be bringing you... Uh, uh, that sort of the solution. Well, actually, I, I think hand, what, so. they, they probably transferred the staff from the people that designed the software for health and human services for the Obamacare. So that level of competency, if that's done with this NERC trial, we need to hunker down and be ready to, to see almost anything. If you don't have a backup generator, get it before next next week. Uh, uh, it in, doesn't instill yeah, uh, confidence, let's put it that way. And by the way, the, the, what happened here in Southern California here uh, in hour one, so we're still on it, is the power would owe to our district here, and luckily I got a pack-up generator that kicked in within four seconds, so uh, we still have not only our high-speed uh, Cox, but satellite uh, HughesNet, and we are at, uh, broadcasting on generators as we speak. Well, it's a good thing you have them. That's, uh, that's yeah, I'm, I'm prepped up, I'm, and I realize is you can't trust the government. They're not only stupid on purpose, they're evil on purpose, and uh, we don't want to separate the two because it's a chop-up on one day whether they're more evil or stupid. Some days they're more stupid than evil, and other days the evil is far worse than the stupid. <laughs> Let's talk about Fukushima now. <laughs> what's, what's going on with Fukushima? This is a, a catastrophe in the waiting. Uh, next Friday they're going to start pulling the fuel rod assemblies. Now, why are they such in a panic? Are they realizing that something's coming that's going to cause them to lose total control, whether it's a big earthquake. We know the magma chamber of Fuji, Mount Fuji is rising. We know that the Japanese have the best satellite system for looking at the torsion field of the magnetic flux lines of the Earth that are advanced warning of major superquakes, like the one in Santiago, Chile a few years ago. The Japanese satellite could see that. South Pole magnetically disappeared. So I'm very suspicious that they're in a panic to try to get out the 200 plus fuel rod assemblies they think are not bent or destroyed, but they're whole towers leaning, these aren't going to come straight up, and the boronated rubber is gone, and as we mentioned with John Apsley, uh, you mentioned before about the seals, what will happen if the seals, if they get some suspicion the seals are starting to go, what are the consequences to that, or pulling these fuel rod assemblies out and smacking the rods together, which can cause a critical reaction and cause a pyrophoric nuclear fire, that's not a good thing. It's um, my impression that they're trying to stick to some kind of a schedule. And that in itself has a lot of, that adds a lot of pressure to getting, uh, I should say, uh, more uh, uh, difficult evolutions to form flawless. Yeah, well, so right they're there, not making a right Papa there, John pizza and they're not right delivering, yeah, they're not a Papa John pizza delivering in 20 minutes. They're, uh, this <laughs> is something right. you have to use some, some, some rationality and common sense about it. I don't think it's rational to move anything anywhere. I think they need to turn That's this right. into a crystal. Yeah, it needs to be a waste site where they move nothing, and they turn it into a crystalline sarcophagus and get the heck out of there and monitor it for thousands of years until they can. Until unless they, until they have technology to break down the nuclear isotopes with subatomic harmonic nuclear physics. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. So let's summarize what's going on with Fukushima and what's likely to happen. Um, and you're not going to hear this the particular summary anywhere else. The situation, I think, is dire, where these fools are going to pull these fuel rod assemblies, and the chances of them causing a pyrophoric fire or a major surge in radiation, even if it's only partial, is real high. I mean, they release radiation in their just their tanks in advance of the typhoon uh, that occurred about a week ago. And that radiation level is still kind of floating around way above where it should be. We have, uh, what, what's going to happen, Chris? Because I don't, don't think people realize at the very least we're going to have, you know, a lot of radiation here and acute radiation sickness on chronic because we're all getting chronically exposed now, two and a half years in. Uh, we have a radiation cloud coming across the oceans. It's in the ocean waters. It's already causing <clears throat> the salmon. 80% of the salmon run is gone. All of the sardines are gone. Starfish are dissolving uh, up in Washington, Oregon State, in that area up in southern British Columbia. We have this giant major plume of radiation that will be here in two to five months. 
Uh, the, the crazy Fukushima people are not being monitored by the international agencies to do something stupid like pulling fuel rod assembly bundles when they don't know what they've done and they've actually proven to the world community and anybody with two clues that they're dangerous and stupid. They have Yakuza all over the plant, which are the Japanese form of the Mafia, putting people in there that are basically untrained. Uh, most of them told that if they don't cover the dosimetry card, they will terminate their family and themselves. They'll kill them, the Yakuza does, paying off debts or whatever, bringing in cheap workers. And uh, they're basically running on empty. Uh, I see a disaster coming, and I think that the fall of the Soviet Union, which occurred after the Chernobyl disaster, is a forewarning to America that unless we have a real president, which we don't have now, we've got a jackass, excuse my English, a fool in the White House. You know, a jackass is actually a version of a, of, a, of a donkey, so that's a technical term. We have a donkey in the White House that is not paying any attention to this at all. He's talking about how you can keep your plan, you do this plan, that plan. I'm saying, the fact is, Millions of people have lost their insurance. They'll be you know, floating into a new health care crisis with radiation sickness causing a lot of people sick. They'll arrive in emergency at the hospital not knowing the doctors probably not know even how to properly diagnose it. People with nosebleeds, acute infections, disorientation, bizarre behavior. Uh, I call it zombie syndrome. Acute radiation sickness. That's how you behave like a zombie. Uh, Chris, what's going to happen? Well, I appreciate your letting me know audio blog. Uh, I guess a couple of years ago we talked about the need for covering the wide open to atmosphere and fuel pools at units uh, one, three, and four, and they actually did that. You know, they, they we laid out a lot of uh, information that that should be done or yeah, would and, be done in spite and, of. And they did, and they did cover it to some extent, though, didn't they? And, and now the, the preparation was well. There's a reason for that too, other than keeping the, the clean water out, which would come out. Uh, Runoff uh, contaminated, but also that it's a ventilation system. It it prevents uh, it prevents particles from leaving the building, and because it's part of the atmospheric cleanup system, so they needed to do that no matter what. Now they're trying to prepare so that they could go ahead and remove fuel from unit four. Now again, you know, we did ask what what's the hurry right now, and and, and really what's the impetus that they're not telling us for that kind of uh, advanced uh, schedule, and and we entertained uh, whether the seal in Unit 4 that we did talk about ad nauseum uh, is leaking, and, and if that seal does go, it's, it's, uh, it would drain the spent fuel pool. There would be no way to refill it. So maybe maybe that's one one uh, uh, particular uh, uh, idea that they're having. Also, another notion would be that uh, they're just trying to stick to a schedule, and uh, they're going to you know dam the torpedoes full speed ahead, which is something I don't really want to uh, uh yeah, see, see happen without any forethought, and they're going to go after the uh, uh, most reactive fuel, that's the fuel that's brand new, first, which, uh, you know, it, it makes some sense because it's not the most highly radioactive fuel, but it's stuff that could also uh, trigger a criticality event. And Tim did bring up last week a pretty good question, and that is a criticality event happened in spent fuel pools number four. Could the neutron flux involve Unit three, and cause a criticality event there. I can't say no, and I've been trying to. Uh, I've been talking with people all week long who are experts in that particular part of the field. Also, they said yes. Yeah, if there's if the borated rubber that we talked about has been degraded, uh, right. we brought that up over a year ago. Right, there and the seals. Be, by the way, uh, you you pointed out the only one to point out that the seals are degrading. Uh, maybe they're panicking over the fact they think the seals are eventually going to burst. I think. The Japanese know that there is the ice on common and meteor storms happening around the planet. That we have a very high likelihood of a, an acute volcanic event, which is a plasma event, because acute volcanoes and earthquakes happen when a coronal mass ejection strikes the Earth. And if you have a large enough one, a major release of energy could cause the upthrust zone off of Fukushima to cause another much larger tsunami. Uh, they're actually waiting, and they predicted that the this is back in 2010, before this happened in Japan, at the time they expected for the next major super tsunami was not when it happened um, back in March the uh, of 11th of 2011. It is November 2013. So this month is the month they predicted based on their, all their top scientists for a major superquake to strike the outside zone off of northern Japan. So I think there's something there in a panic mode. I mean, I don't understand why 
Now, all of a sudden, they're trying to pull a fuel rod assembly bundles when they could only get a partial job. And what you mentioned also was the checkerboarding. They didn't checkerboard like we have every second system. Like a, yeah, thanks uh, for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah, so I want you to expand on that because people need to understand we do that, that makes it safer. The Japanese haven't, which means these are going to bang into each other, and just tapping these fuel rods can make them go on fire. Well, that was a recommendation from uh, a different project that my team was on where uh, it was found that it's, you could take a precaution by not standing the fuel uh, in the, it, 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 they stand upright in racks next to each other, but it's not necessary to have them adjacent to each other. You could leave a space like a checkerboard, have uh, uh, one fuel assembly in an empty space and another fuel in an empty space and make like a checkerboard out of it. And that would afford easier cooling should, should, that, uh, should you need to have uh, cooling or facilitate cooling and it will also uh, reduce the possibility of criticality because uh, the the physical, the physical um, uh, uh, fuel is not uh, adjacent to each other, and that itself would add some shutdown margin. Uh, that's you know I'll, I'll use some of the terminology, you know, so some of the shutdown margin. So the better shutdown margin, the better off you are. But see now with the boiling and rubber has been uh, admitted that Tepco said has been uh, damaged. That that was adding to shutdown margin, and now it's reduced. And when you get down to no shutdown margin, you got the criticality of that. So, at that point, they could have done that pretty easily, and they did not. They chose not to, and it would have been it would have cost them nothing. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, there, there you got a. They didn't want to build a seawall high enough, even though the fishing. Well, they actually have. Uh, they actually it. broke. They actually broke down the seawall. Naturally, there was a cliff there, another twenty-five meters high when they put the plant back in. 50 years ago. So they actually lowered the area because it was a natural cliff there, and it would have been a natural seawall they could have built on top of to, would, to prevent that tsunami from striking the diesel backup generators. Or even just put the generators further back up the hills behind them so they're at a higher elevation so they can't be swamped and lose their backup power. Uh, our systems here in America, we have a number that are below what's called a high water mark. And those are all kinds of plants down in the southeastern uh, United States just waiting for the worst uh, bad weather or an earthquake along the New Madrid fault zone, I just think that our nuclear industry are suicidal. I really think there's a death wish there. They should be cleaning up this mess. You know, I heard that actually Fukushima actually got a profit this uh, quarter. They actually made a pretty significant profit. Yeah, I guess they're working with the, with the, the Yakuza, so they have people basically in a death march. They're shaking, disoriented, nauseated, and dying, walking around like dead men. Uh, trying to so called move these. I, I've been yeah. I've been asked I've been asked uh, to uh, to talk about uh, when you're moving from the west coast. Yeah, well, the, the thing is that people need to understand that the radiation doesn't stop here. It actually is much worse at higher elevations. If it's at twenty six to thirty five thousand feet, and it hits Idaho and on Colorado and Amarillo, Texas and Vermont, or goes over the poles, the radiation is not the highest here. We hardly ever get rain. We're basically in a high desert here where we are on the coast even. We, we get very little rain, I'm seven miles in. What happens is the radiation levels here are relatively low. They're higher further north, and they're higher further inland, especially at high altitudes. And that means anywhere in the United States, including in uh, higher altitudes, like even 500 or 1,000 feet, uh, or 5,000 feet further in the Rocky Mountains or further east or Vermont, people need to be aware that the radiation is high up in the atmosphere, it's not down low, there's a small amount that hits, is hitting these streams that's embedded in the oceans. Major plume is coming, but the biggest radiation is in the clouds. And it's hitting your way across the country. Thank you, Chris. Uh, amazing, uh, scary news, but people need to prepare hazmat. Get yourself ready. Get all your hazardous material radiation kit here. Get your uh, raincoats, decon showers. Get ready, because these idiots are about to do it next Friday.